How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to the Columbus Blue Jackets franchise mode. Episode number nine, moving into year number three, the 2022-23 regular season. In the last one, we blew it up in quite an off season. We made some moves in free agency. We made some big trades. We made we had a big draft. We saw a total overhaul of the fourth line going down the grinder route. And I'm liking this team moving forward, but still, of course, a lot of things to do heading into a season that we really want to bounce back from after missing the playoffs in year number two, after having winning won the division in year number one. Quick little announcement at the beginning of this video. I just want to say that now that we have moved into the month of September, I've uh, literally in the real world, not just in the uh, NHL world, I am now moving into my final year of university, which means that my workload is at an absolute high. I have that on top of working part-time and other commitments in my life. So not to say that uploads are stopping, but just if there's a few days without uploads as opposed to the summer schedule where it was, you know, at least a video every three to four days max, it might be moving into a every five or six day type of thing. I'm going to try to make the videos a bit shorter so that they're faster to edit and easier to upload. So going over less comments in the video, but of course still always replying to every single one. You know, that takes about an hour to do just that. And unfortunately, you know, like in a perfect world, I'd love to quit my part-time job and just be doing YouTube and Twitch. But unfortunately, it's been over a year and YouTube still has not approved or denied my uh, application to the partner program. So that is where I'm left here. I gotta allocate my time wisely. But I have a blast doing this. I don't see this as work. It is just an absolute hoot with all of you in the comments. And speaking of comments, let get into those because without that it's just me playing franchise mode this is our team building together going towards the stanley cup and i really appreciate all of your insight in the last one there are a lot of comments like i said so let me just go over a few of them recapping that some of the main questions were what do we do with a lot of the good uh i guess extra pieces on the team Evgeny Shveshnikov and Philip Kurashev, both 81 overalls. And we get Grav uh, Gavrikov also at an 80 overall. We have a pretty full lineup. We acquired Worf Rajenko, by the way, in the last episode. The defensive defenseman, 89 overall in the last year of his entry-level deal. So he'll be an expensive re-signing. We uh, acquired Victor Olafsson in free agency, as well as Cal Clutterbuck and Nick Delorier. Liam Foody been promoted from the AHL to the NHL. And back to defense as well, we also signed Calvin DeHaan. Goaltending, we signed Igor Shosturkin, who's up to an 86 overall. And at the draft, we drafted Felipe Sanderson with the fourth overall pick, a medium elite playmaker, 79 overall at the moment. We have him, guys like Jacob Perrault, growing nicely, as well as other NHL caliber players, such as Jeremy Roy, who we need to figure out what are we doing with. So those were the main questions. Who moves, who stays? We have an abundance of playmakers. There, what do we do with some of the contract extensions that we could be looking at, as well as some of the RFAs who are still in free agency, most notably Morgan Frost, if we sort by overall, there's still a lot of other names, but Morgan Frost especially, cheap contract, the Flyers have no money to re-sign him, he is 23 years of age, 73 face-offs, not the best centerman, but if he fit our lines, he would be great, we just don't know his line fit and we can't scout him unfortunately, even though I have scouts in the region, it says no scouts in the region because he's not currently playing, so very tempting to sign him, but then we would have an abundance of playmakers as we already do, and that was a great comment left by Scott saying he's great in simulation and all that great stuff, but at some point, we got to move some of these playmakers. Reinhardt, Steele, Texier, Foodie, Kurashev, Sanderson, Schlappik, uh, Dragachinsev, and Morgan Frost if we add him. Way too many. Not saying we don't go after him, but if we do, someone or some ones is slash are going to have to be the odd man out as far as playmakers. So when I think of that comment, I think that moving forward, Reinhardt, like far, far forward, Texier, and Felipe Sanderson will be three playmakers who are locked for the top six. Who else is in our top six? Maybe Line 8, Bjorkstrand. Who gets that last spot? Is Olofsson still around? Is anyone else growing? What about the other playmakers on our team? So we need to think about the player types. Unfortunately, in this chemistry world, we got to think about that. And that's not even including any power forwards, unfortunately. So we are definitely interested in Morgan Frost, but I do want to give the players that we have on the team an opportunity before we go out and get someone new. Like, I wouldn't want to go out and have to do an RFA signing with Morgan Frost just to move Steele and Kurashev, who we already have. I don't think that would make much sense. Let me give a full opportunity to Steele and or Kurashev first as second line center, and then we move forward. 
The reason I'm saying Philip Kershev for second line center is so interesting is because his line fit is perfect and gives the line a plus five. So not as good for Kershev as an 81, but it boosts him to an 86, Bjorkstrand to a 90, and Texte to an 89, as opposed to the current plus one that puts him at 85, 84, 86, respectively. Shesterkin was a huge move for us in the offseason. Baber's saying that I've never really seen Shesterkin sim particularly well, no matter the team that he's on. So just keeps, you know, something to keep in mind. And I have to agree with that. Unfortunately, Shesterkin does not usually simulate too, too well, but... He was a fantastic opportunity in free agency for us. We're going to give him every opportunity to succeed, and hopefully we can defy the odds. And he's still an 86 overall medium elite. I think we can make it work if the stars align. Pat thinks that Shesterkin was a big W, as well as being very happy to see us get Worf or uh, Rajenko on defense. Uh, excited to see Sanderson's NHL fit once we get him up here. And if the Vegas Golden Knights want to gift us Zach Hyman like that, maybe roll the dice. We were looking at possible trades for Philip Kurashev, and one of them would be getting Zach Hyman from the Vegas Golden Knights. If we were to move him, that would be a likely destination. The current power forward, playmaker, whatever combo in the third line is Jenner, Foodie, power forward, playmaker. Roslevic, a two-way forward though, gives it a plus one. Even if we swap it out for a current sniper like, like Evgeny Sveshnikov, his line fit is really bad, but it does maintain a plus one. It's just his line fit is so terrible. If he was just a better fit, that could be a plus three or plus five for us. So unfortunate as we're trying to make these guys fit. I really want Rosovic to stay on this team. I want to stay true to the kind of gritty nature of the Blue Jackets with guys like him in the lineup who are just strong, uh, you know, good offensively, but also really responsible two-way wise. But he's just he hasn't been good at all for us, especially last season, scoring 23 points and a negative 20. So that's you know the issue that I'm facing. There were a lot of comments from Morgan Frost. So I won't go over those, but just to say that there's a lot of love in the comments for Morgan Frost. So again, we'll keep note of it, and we're going to continue moving forward with Steele and Kershev and see what makes sense. And maybe you know, especially late October, November, December, if he's still in RFA, that would be something to think about. Grievous says that it would be a good time possibly to stockpile bad cap in exchange for picks and then we trade them based on the upcoming draft class for elite potential players. Look at strengthening that left wing, for example. So concerning the cap situation at the moment, we do have quite a bit of money for this season. Next year is going to be a different story, but we have just about $13 million in cap space at the moment. When it comes to all expiring, though, Rajenko and Steele are going to take a lot of that money. Steele probably only an extra million, but Rajenko is going to be wanting like $9 million or so. If we signed him for the full, let's say seven years, as probably the cheapest yeah, if we get him for seven years, it brings him to the age of 29. 85% of that is 8.925. So if we go for seven years on an 89 overall medium lead, we're just going to keep on growing, and he's only going to cost us 8.950. I think we absolutely have to take that. In Legend's comment, he said he would wait to resign Wharf because as a defensive defenseman, he shouldn't put up absurd numbers so that the contract demand should go down. But with his overall being high and as a creative player who scores more often, I'm not sure I want to roll the dice on betting on that. Uh, as well as in Legend's comments, he says extend Sam Steele right now as he becomes a beast. Keep Durapost unsigned. Frost and even Joe Pavelski in free agency are interesting. Captaincy goes to Boone Jenner unless we guaranteed keep Seth Jones because he thinks trading him for a proper offensive defenseman would be amazing for chemistry. I agree. It just has to be the right opportunity. Play Wood rather than Gavrikov. If it doesn't work out in the preseason, try somebody else. Let's hope for a great season. Thank you, Legend. So with that, I will offer the contract to Warfrajenko. Seven years at 8.950. I hope that he does sign that, but we can continue to play with it as time goes on. Building around him as this team moves forward is going would be just a huge help for us as well to know who is going to be our cornerstone on defense after moving Wierenski and possibly still Jones. Not sure if we're going to be moving him or not. Speaking of whether or not we're moving people, Sam Steele, we don't know if he's staying or not. I'd like it to work out for him. Crazy numbers if we want two or four years, but for three years, he only wants 4.9. And 85% of that is 4.165. So three years at 4.175 for a second line center who, continue, can, who may continue to have great growth. Not a bad price tag at all. The other players on this team, I'm going to wait to re-sign them or to extend them. But just those two names right away want to get that out of the way. And hopefully they will sign on ASAP. Goalies, uh, Olivier Rodrigue, we could probably re-sign him in the near future. We can go for three years or eight years. We could, I could scam the system and go eight years in the Rodrigue. 
but I'll wait on that. Speaking of Audi Rodrigue, who we traded for in the last episode, Zach leaving a good, <laughs> a really good one in the Discord server saying, what we thought we got, Olivia Rodrigo, versus what we actually got, Olivier Rodrigue. But that's all right, because we signed Olivier Rodrigo to be our national anthem singer for the entire 2022-23 season for home games in Columbus, so it's all good. Keeping on the Discord server, moving to Old Man Sports, Pat, he says, I would keep the decor as is. Not sure everyone's obsession with trading Falk. It's been pretty popular in the comments. If he returns to season one form, he is perfect. Honestly, I would just run with this lineup. Frost seems like, at best, a lateral move, and at worst, a downgrade from Sam Steele. And you know what? It's a bit hard to swallow, maybe, but I think this makes a ton of sense right now, especially not trading Justin Falk. And Morgan Frost, yeah, he sounds great, but again, at best, kind of a lateral move, because Sam Steele, we still haven't seen his full potential yet. Not really time to give up on him quite yet either. Pat goes on to talk about grinders and how that now we've embraced them. We got to look to draft them and fill the AHL team with them as well. Grinders with a green pounding kill check mark are worth triple. So pounding kill can come only down to player type, unfortunately. So we can still get that plus three or plus five with the right grinders, two way forwards, two way Ds, and defensive defensemen. We will work on that. Unfortunately, our current pounding killers are not ideal as our grinders and two way forwards do not have check marks. No one has a check mark except for Cal Clutterbuck and Justin Falk, who's an offensive defenseman, doesn't help us. So that's why we're currently getting a zero on the penalty kill. Power play looks all right, but we need another power forward if we're gonna get plus five on both units. And finishing off with Patrick's comment, that's exactly what he is talking about. Focus on grinders that get a plus five for the line, fourth line that is, and a plus three for the penalty kill. So now that we're embracing that fourth line grinder life, we gotta continue scouting more grinders, seeing who the optimal ones for our team are. Frost offer, seem, offer sheet seems like a no-brainer, but potentially puts steel on the block, like we were saying earlier. If he does go on the block, see if we can upgrade the third line with a power forward to go plus three on the second power play unit as well. Guys like Jamie Ben, Chris Kreider might have big, big price tags, but we can stomach a few years of those contracts and get them for really cheap. Third pair D looks like a doozy. Wood and Roy might be the way to go in the preseason. See what works from there. A really good episode compared to the previous one. Well done. Thank you very much, Patrick. So I'll wrap up the comments there. Still a bit long, but not as long as usual. So thanks for hanging around. I'm going to be doing a lot of that off screen where I just send out a bunch of scouts to look at grinders around the NHL. I have scouts working on Radish and Hyman, other power forwards we've been talking about. But at the moment, we will run like this in the regular season. In the preseason, I do want to give an audition to Philip Kurashev as the second line center to give the line a plus five when we swap around with... Who do we have to swap? There's one of the snipers. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's just a plus three on the second line. So... Texay Kershev Burekstrand playing like 87, 84, and 88. It would only be a plus five if we got a proper power forward to probably replace Texier here. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. So sorry, with Kershev at the moment, it's a plus three, potentially a plus five if we were to go down this route and get a better power forward to play on that line. But then that bumps Texier down. Jenner, unfortunately, does not help. So Kershev with a plus three, he'll get an audition. Dahan and Wood as the last pair. We were hearing some suggestions about calling up Jeremy Roy as well, giving in, uh, some chances to Sveshnikov. So this entire preseason is going to be a lot of different mixing and matching. I'll try to keep as much of it the same as I can do. Like Shosurkin will play every game, I think. So I can't say, oh, we only lost because of the goaltending or something. So let me try Sveshnikov in place of Roslovic on the third line. We'll see how that goes. He can play, yeah, he'll just play right wing since he shoots left as well. Kurashev can play second line center, and I'm gonna call up Roy to play with Wood. Even though Dahan probably has a spot locked in, it's more trying to figure out who Dahan plays with, I think. So that's why I don't think I want, even, I don't really need Dahan to play because it's more who's getting that 6th D spot and then who becomes the 7th D. So at the moment, I will call up Roy and just send down Gavrikov while the waivers and stuff are not in effect. No big deal. What's very interesting about Roy is that he gives a plus 5 to the first unit with Worf. Meanwhile, so does Justin Falk, by the way. So do we want to try Falk at a 90 overall to try to restore him to what he was doing in his first season with us? 57 points in 60 games? and But then that relegates Jones to the second pair. 
Or do we put Hua on the second pair, get a plus five, and then trade Jones all together? We have Larson and Hua playing 88 and 80 on that second unit. The biggest issue is when it comes to the playoffs, line chemistry doesn't really matter. So we need guys like Jones who have high overalls. At the moment, I'll keep it like this, plus one, five, one. But like I said, I'll be experimenting as we go through the preseason. I'm not going to touch anything else. Leave the power play and everything as is. Sveshnikov can get a spot there, four-man power play, etc. And let's just do it. Let's roll like that into the preseason. The scouts have been sent out, so I don't need to do any more of that. Uh, the, pro, the, the pro scouts as well as the amateur scouts. And there we go. Thank you, lines. And the first game will be up against the Carolina Hurricanes. I also went out and tried to sign an NHL goalie coach, so we'll see if he signs. And Worf signs on. Let's go! Lieutenant Worf is here. It is an easy decision to decide to renew my contract with you. I appreciate that you chose to offer me the type of money that I feel I am worth. So I decided to re-sign. Kapla! And welcome to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Long term, my friend. Oh, before he even plays a game. And then perfect, Francisco Smoszkowski is going to be the NHL goalie coach. He had a good offense rating, so hopefully that'll help us for offense, if that does anything. Let's move into the slow sim. Game one of the preseason up against the Hurricanes. Go through it quickly. 2-0, Jenner and Texier. Second period, no scoring. Third period, 2-1. And we take it 2-1. So, not too shabby. Brassois, Shosturkin. Good performances from Shosturkin, who also has to show us why we signed him. Looking at things like plus minuses. Jeremy Wa had one assist and was a plus one. Kershev was a plus one. Okay, okay. Good to note. Good to note. So I think after that game, I want to see a little bit more from Roy. But now what I'm going to do is take out Wood and play Gavrikov with Roy. See how that works. And then uh, offensively, I'm going to keep Kershev as is. I'm going to keep Shveshnikov and Kershev actually both the, as they were. I'm just going to swap Wood. Now, you know what? But he played 16 minutes and he, he was strong defensively. So yeah, no reason to do that yet. I want to. I'll give him two or three games with the current uh, settings that we have, I suppose. And Sam Steele, easy decision for him to renew the contract as well. That's really big, very very nice. So just to make note, moving into next season now, we still have a lot of cap this year, 13.2 million at the moment. But moving into next season without really much to do, we have 7.8 million extension. So very nice. Not saying we have a ton of room, but it's nice. 7.8 million without much left to do. I will take that. At the Nationwide Arena now, up against the Islanders. First period, 3-1. Nice. Hosang opens it, but then Shaw, Line, A, Falk. Second period, 5-2. Jones and Shaw. Okay, there's the power play. And third period ends 5 to Shots were 45-23. to Shaw had two goals. Falk, a goal and an assist. And Liam Foody, two assists. So, all right, all right, all right. After those two games now, Kershev has one assist. Sveshnikov with two games, negative one. Defense, Kyle Wood, one assist. And Roy has one assist with a plus one. Okay, things are, things are looking all right. I'm going to try putting Kershev on the third line, playing him with Foodie and Jenner. And I'm going to put Sam Steele back to the second line to see how he does now with that plus one. So Rozovic will stay out of the lineup still. Steele comes back and Sveshnikov moves out. And then the line looks, lineup looks at the plus three, one, one, three. Olafson, nothing in two games. Reinhardt, I don't know why he's not playing much, actually. Olafson, 13 minutes, that's it? Because he's on the power play. Uh, yeah, he's on the second unit. Maybe that's why. Th why is Jones there? Let me do that. And maybe that changes something. I'll put Steel second line as well. This would be like a plus three, but Jones is holding him back since he is a two-way D, unfortunately. Uh, won't touch anything else. Shosturkin is playing lights out through those couple of games. Here against the Flyers with Frost and everybody still unsigned. By the way, uh, Ratcliffe was also a suggestion in the comments. I didn't get to that comment, but I did notice it. Watch listed and being scouted at the moment. A power forward who's on the block, 79 overall. He could be an option for us as well. First period, 1-0 line A. Second period, 3-1 Falk on the power play and Oliver Bjorkstrand. And third period, oh, 4-4. Four four. Rat, there he is. Ratcliffe scores twice. Andrew Shaw still scoring out here. But now we got a 4-4 game into overtime. Nothing comes from it, and we win it in a shootout. Oliver Bjorkstrand getting the winner as well. Wow, what a roller coaster there. Ratcliffe with two goals. Line A had a goal and an assist. 5-4 the final. So how are the... Ah, I should have looked at the plus minuses just after that one game. But how are the plus minus is looking in general? Olafsson, still negative one. He has an assist. Sam Steele had one assist and was an even plus minus. That's nice. 
Kurashev looking okay. Uh, fourth line's looking good as well. Plus two, plus two, negative two, negative one. So now is the time where I'll get Wood out of there, and I'll try Hua with Gavrikov. All right, that is good to go. We're going up against the New York Rangers now. We are still 3-0. Justin Falk with four points in three games. Andrew Shaw scoring left and right. You love to see it. Gavrikov in the lineup. Steele, second line center. Kershaw on the wing. First period, 1-1. One, one, Patrick Laine. Second period, 2-1. Zibanejad puts them ahead. Corpy Salo in nets. That must have been... Either it's an injury or a computer rotation. But that's okay with me. I wanted to keep it kind of uniform, but... It seems as though Corpy Sal is playing well enough. Sim to the end. Okay, Patrick Liney with the second of the night ties it up. Overtime, and Andrew Shaw wins it in overtime. What is this guy doing out here? Two goals from Liney, two assists from Jones, 30 saves from Corpy Salo. My goodness, how is Andrew Shaw scoring this much? Speaking of Isaac Ratcliffe, by the way, he the scouting report has come back and he fits the third line and all penalty kill lines. Six foot six, he's seven, only 79 overall at the age of 23, but could be a great chemistry option for us, especially if and when we move on from Boone Jenner. Looking at other people that we've been scouting, this is here's the watch list of over the years that we've had. Uh, Radish, who we wanted to hear more about, fits none of the lines, unfortunate. Zach Hyman, yeah, forward line three and all penalty kill lines, just like Ratcliffe. Uh, Michael Rasmussen, did I scout him? I should, you know, I'm going to get Michael Rasmussen scouted for all, oh, but no scouts, sorry, Pat, for old time's sake. And we'll just back out like that. Uh, let's go another game with the lineup as we had it. Now moving against the New Jersey Devils. Sterkin fully healed, okay, so he was injured. Playable injury, no problem. Uh, I know it's, it's a bit, it's longer than we've ever spent on the preseason before, but we do have a lot of decisions. Let's go a bit quicker. 5-4 win after that one. How are we looking here? Sam Steele, two assists in three games. Texay, two goals. Bjorkstrand, goal and assist. Kershev, only that one assist. Andrew Shaw, by the way, five goals and one assist in five games played. Kershev with one assist in five games is hurting me a little bit. Let's go Roslovic on the second line. Uh, sorry, on the third line. And I'm going to take out Steele and give another... No, no, I'll keep Steele one more game and Kershev can go in the last game. Gavrikov, one goal, plus minus of zero. Roy, one assist, plus minus of zero as well. So let's go Gavrikov and Dahan this time. I know I, want, I said Dahan's like a lock for the team kind of, but I want to see how they play together. That's the, the part I'm kind of interested in as well. So let me try Gavrikov, Dahan this game, and then like Wood and Dahan next game for these last couple games here. So going up against the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, second to last game, we lose 5-2. to two. Wow, another goal from Andrew Shaw. Six goals in six games. Do not know how he does it. That was an unfortunate one for the plus minuses, probably. Roslovic was a negative one. Steele's a negative one. Defense, plus four, two, three, two. Gavrikov, negative, negative one. Dahan, still a zero. So let's go Dahan and Wood for this last game of the preseason. Okay, there we go. Shesterkin between the pipes. And we'll go steal second line with Rosovic on the third line once again. Sorry, for the last game, we're going Kershev on the second line with Rosovic still on the third line. So one more chance for the plus three to blossom there. I'm close to putting Olofsson on the second line over the first line, actually, because he has not scored, I don't think, any goals as a, sni as a first line sniper for us. First period, 0-0. Zero, zero. Second period, 3 nothing caps. Lovely. And we ended off 4-4. Four, four. Huge comeback. Rosovic on the third line. Texier... Kurashev, the second line center, and then Bjorkstrand with 30 seconds left. My goodness, 4-4 game, and overtime nothing. We drop in a shootout, but that's okay. That's a great third period rally. Rosovic with a goal and an assist, trying to fight his way onto this team. And we end the preseason going 5-1-1. One, and one. Let's take a look at the global numbers here over the entire preseason. Seth Jones led the scoring with eight points in seven games. That's what we need to be seeing from him. Very nice. Andrew Shaw, point per game. Line A, point per game. Reinhardt, five assists. Bjorkstrand, four. Uh, so is Jenner. Falk, four. Foodie with four. Okay. Olofsson, four assists, which is a bit odd. I'm probably going to think about changing him and Bjorkstrand, perhaps. Texier, three goals. Kershev with three points in six games and a plus-minus of zero. 
Texier negative three. Delorier three assists. Clutterbuck three assists. Rajenko three assists plus four. Rozovic had no points in one game and two points in the second game. That is a plus one overall. Steele had two assists, negative one in four games. Gavrikov with one goal, negative one in three games. Wood, one assist, negative two in four games. Wa, one assist, zero in five games. Larson, nothing. Dahan, nothing in two games. Shosturkin did very well, 4 0 oh, 1. Uh, Corpisalo got a little bit roughed up when he came in, but that's okay. And yeah, that's a lot of decisions we have to make here. Probably what I'm thinking is pff, I know it's crazy. But Kyle Wood is probably the odd man out here because I think Wood has to be in the team or off the team. Gavrikov, I think I could keep him as a seventh defenseman. A lot of it comes down to player types because Dehan's the offensive defenseman. If he's a guarantee for the team, then he has to play with a defensive defenseman, and that's Wood or Gavrikov. Gavrikov probably did it slightly better, but Wa was very nice as well. And I don't know if I can play two offensive defensemen together. That's why Roy and Wood may be the answer. But then what happens to Dehan, who I paid $2.35 million for? Does he just become my seventh defenseman? That's an expensive seventh defenseman. And that means Gavrikov is the one who gets traded away. I guess Roy over here would be Wood and Roy. Uh, Larson with plus one, one assist. Falk four points, zero for the plus minus. That's why Jones did really well, but that plus five with Rajenko is so tempting. I'll probably give that an experiment during the regular season. Uh, special teams were fine. Coming back to what we got with Kurashev going on, he had three points, like we said, and was a zero in the plus minus category. He broke even. Rozovic did okay, so I'm kind of inclined to keep Rozovic for a little bit more of a trial and keep deciding on steel Kurashev. Kurashev did well, but I think I still lean steel. So let's try this being a lineup moving into the regular season, kind of like what we already had, actually, exactly what we already had, except for Dahan moving out of the lineup. So I would keep Dahan and Kurshev as my seventh defenseman and 13th forward, and then probably end up just trading Gavrikov because, uh, sorry, Sveshnikov is here as well as a forward. Ah, totally forgot about him because his stats weren't there because he got sent down. But in the preseason, he was negative one in two games played. Very small sample size, though. Uh, so if I could just trade Berdain and Gavrikov for, like, picks, that would probably be the move for us. Let me see what we could get for Gavrikov. I like him a lot. He's been a good piece for us on this team since we took over. But for 2.8 million, I already have a 13th D-man making 2.4. Uh, I think it would be better just move him because I already have Kukan. I have Peak. I have guys who can take that spot. So Gavrikov at the moment, 26 years of age. He's been good, man. He was, what, a fifth round pick? A sixth round pick. He's been here his whole career. Only 233 games, but pretty consistent. Last season, not as good, but year number one, he was really strong with a plus 22. Ugh, I don't want to trade him. And Dahan has so much value, but I can't just flip him after having just signed him. And Gavrikov, if we play him in the minors, he's not going to want to re-sign next season. And trading him, we wouldn't really get anything if we traded him. A fourth and a sixth from a bunch of teams here. Just fourth and sixth. I don't know. Maybe I'll just wait to see what all of you have to say about that. I'm not going to force a move. I'll just put him in the minors for now. I know he'll be unhappy. But I don't want to force a move. You take everything that happened in the preseason into consideration. And you tell me what you think the best course of action would be. So now I'll just make the final lineup changes. And we'll get a look at how the lineups are looking in the NHL and AHL heading into the regular season. All right, so the episode's already getting long enough. Let's get into this regular season. Here's the lines are going to look. Lining's going to go first line left wing. Bjorkstrand first line right wing. Man is coming off of a 41-goal campaign, so let's see what he can do this year. Olofsson will play second line to start it off. Defense, Wood, and Roy, etc. All of the stuff we, we already spoke about. Special teams were okay. I looked at the team stats, but I fixed them a little bit, especially the penalty kill, so now there's a plus one on the second unit. But without further ado, let's hop into year number three. Fixed up the AHL lines as well. Waivers are in effect. And now that we are just about ready to rock and roll, it is time to name a captain. We have been talking about this for a long time. Our captain in year number one. I forget if we even had one, to be honest, because Nick Felino had just been traded. I don't think we had a captain, actually. So it comes down to a lot of leadership, age, 
time with the team and how long we see this player being on the team as well in the moving forward into the future. So moving forward, I definitely do see Worf and guys like that having an A. When we think about guys that we are committed to, guys that we have signed to long term, those are the guys that I think should be getting some A's. So starting off with our first line center, we signed to a big 7.7 .7 whatever million dollar contract. Sam Reinhardt will have an A on this team, one of the alternate captains for us moving forward. We got him from the Sabres. He committed to this franchise. He's our number one guy. Maybe he transitions to number two someday in the future. Who knows? But he is going to be here for a long time. Next, moving over to the defensive side of things. Seth Jones. I'm going to give him an A. A lot of people calling Seth Jones for captain. But I'm sorry. I am not able to commit to Seth Jones being the captain on this franchise yet because I don't know if he's going to be on this team for very long yet. That is the glory of the alternate. He, I would say, is next in line for the captaincy, but I cannot make him the captain today because I believe the captain of this team has to be Boone Jenner. Jenner is the longest serving player. It's nine or 10 seasons he's been on the team now. He has been a faithful soldier. We have him signed for a few more seasons as well. If we don't trade him, I don't think we will be. I was just talking about players we want to keep on this team long term, being the ones who get the letters. And I do see Jenner being on this team for the next few seasons. I do see Seth Jones also being on this team for the next few seasons as well. But there's still a lot of things in the air. Could he be traded for the right piece if he's not doing well and someone else pops up? Yes. Could Sam Reinhardt be traded? I don't think so, because I'm very committed to him, we as a team, to him being the number one center. So I don't know if I'm kind of contradicting myself or what, but what I'm trying to say is Boone Jenner's been here a long time. I think he'll be here a little bit more. He is the veteran and the leader of this team. Reinhardt, we give him that because he is our first line center and he's getting into a leadership role now, moving into his third season on the team. Seth Jones has been here very long as well, probably the longest after Boone Jenner. So he will be the captain someday if he sticks around, but we're still not totally sure on him. I'd rather Jones be an alternate for two seasons, then Jenner leaves, then he becomes captain, then we commit to him being the captain, and then we end up losing him in like a season or something. So kind of like a Derek McKenzie type thing on the Panthers or you know like a Brett Clark on the Colorado Avalanche where he's not the best player or the player that we're committed to for the longest time, but at least for last season and for the season before that, for this season and you know probably next season, he is the leader of this franchise in a lot of ways. So with all that taken care of, Boone Jenner with the C on his jersey, we are at home against the 0-2-0 San Jose Sharks. They're hungry for their first win. We're hungry to bounce back after last season's disgusting playoff miss. Worf is in the lineup and a lot of new faces at home in front of the fans. Let's put on a show for them for game one of the 2022-23 regular season first period 1-1 game Patrick Laine opens it up on our former goaltender Chris Drieger and Kevin LeBanc scoring for them with 217 to go we have a tie game heading into the second period but the fans erupting at a power play goal from Patrick Laine who had 40 plus goals the season before last but last season was slacking off a little second period now 2-1 Sharks as Timo Meyer halfway through the period or so put the Sharks up and heading into the third shots are very even 17 16 in our favor but we're down by one and we need someone to tie this up soon earns now putting the sharks up but then patrick line our hero of the day and then cal clutterbuck that fourth line that destroyed the preseason ties this game up at three power play late for the blue jackets that one's killed off under three to go now this game's tied at three minute and a half 30 seconds and we're headed to overtime we have to go in and see this one but just to say Patrick Liney with his second of the night brings us within one. Cal Clutterbuck, a minute and 40 seconds later, ties this game up. Shots 28-27 in our favor, and it's 3-3 headed into overtime at home for the season opener. Look at Worf, man. Look at that Klingon warrior. Oh, love it. Let's see who the hero will be from either team in overtime. Here at Nationwide Arena, Reinhardt versus Couture at the faceoff. Let's do it. Sharks lose this one. They go winless in their first three. We're looking for our first one of the year. Line A also on the edge of a hat trick. In front. Big save. Rebound. Scores! Justin Falk and the Blue Jackets win the season opener in overtime. What a comeback from down 3-1 to winning at 4-3. The computer won in Wharf or Jones on the first power, uh, first overtime 3-on-3 three three pair. But I said, you know what? I think it's going to help us in the long run if we put Justin Falk right there. And the move pays off for GM Data, overruling the coach. Pablo, what are you thinking? 
On the doorstep is Justin Falk pinching in. There's Reinhardt with the A on his jersey. And that is the game winner. Everyone's there. Stinger's happy. Boone Jenner with the boys with his captain C. Oh, what a finish. And the Blue Jackets take it 4-3 to three at Nationwide Arena. A huge night to open up the season as Line A scores two goals and an assist for three points in the season opener. We're going to Madison Square Garden now for game number two of the regular season. Not sure if Shesterkin will be between the pipes here, but let's see against his old team what happens here. First period, 1-1 game. It is Corpi Salo in Nets. Line A picking, just not even picking up where he left off, just continuing his torrid pace here on the power play. Kako also scoring on the power play. Second period, 3-2 now. Heidel scores on the power play. But then Andrew Shaw scores on the power play. What is he doing on the power play? And then Adam Larson puts us ahead 3-2. So four out of the five goals that have been power play goals. We're being outshot 25-20, and we are up by one. Corpi Sal getting the start here, I guess, as Shesterkin opened up the season. Also to note that that first win of the season was his first win as a Blue Jacket. Power play for the Rangers gets killed off, and then Victor Olofsson scores on the power play. Adam Fox comes right back about 23 seconds later for uh, seven goals. So that's five of the seven goals in the night being scored on the power play. Under two to go now, up by one, and that'll be all she wrote as Cal Clutterbuck adds the empty netter. Two goals in two games for him. We get outshot 38 to 27. And we come away with a 5 3 victory. The fourth line killing it. And a big night from Corpi Salo as he stood tall. And we are now 2 and 0 to begin the season. Patrick Line, big smile on his face. Last game that we're going to slow sim here is we want to see up against Sam Reinhardt and Victor Olofsson's old team, the Buffalo Sabres. And then after that, we'll get into the calendar simulation. So let's see it at home, back once again at Nationwide Arena. First period, 1-1 game. Michael Oliver, the grinder, scoring on Corpi Salo, who's in here. But Patrick Line keeping it up. 1-1 one, one game. Second period, 2-1. to one. Oliver Bjorkstrand with his first of the season. Love to see it on Uko Pekalukkanen. Shots 19-13 to 13 in our favor. Up by one. Athanasiu, the former Blue Jackets. And then Gustav Nyquist. Two goals from two former Blue Jackets within about 30 seconds of each other. And we go from up by one to down by one with under 10 to go. Power play Buffalo. We have to kill that one off. And we do under five to go. We need a late heroic, late, late heroism from someone. But nothing comes. Oh, we get shut out in the third period by Uko Pekalukkanen. And the two former Blue Jackets get it done. But Patrick Liney, first star of the night with a goal and an assist. We are now 2-1-0 to begin the season. Great to hear. Let's start simulating a bit more. We'll observe things like Steele and Roslovic and Wood and Hua and all that after we get a good chunk in. So let's move to the month of November. And we'll go see a big marquee matchup at home against Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. We beat the Penguins 5-1 before losing 4-1 to to the Senators and then beating the Coyotes 3-1. to And then we destroy the Kings 8-3 to in a blowout. Vegas goal lines are 4-4-1. We beat them 6-1, to 6-2-0 and through our first eight games. Tampa at 500, 5-5-0. Five, five, oh. we, we lose to them, excuse me, 5-3. to three. Nashville Predators, we beat them in overtime 3-2. to two. The Kings, after we beat them 8-3, to three. a week later, we beat them 3-2. to two. Very nice. Hurricanes are 6-5-1. We beat them 4-3. Looking for win number 10, and there it is against the Islanders, 2-1. 10-3-0 oh, through our first 13 games, tied with the Flyers and the Devils, the top of our division, up against the 8-5-1 Edmonton Oilers now. Let's see what they can do. We are at home. We've done well at home so far this season. Let's keep it up. First period, 1-0. Andrew Shaw on Mikey LaForge. Wow, Andrew Shaw, man, I love it. Second period, 1-1 one, one game, Brendan Saad ties it up. Shots are 25-20 in our favor, and we have a tied game headed into the final 20 minutes here. Five minutes in, nothing coming from either team. Strong defensive performances, but Worf Rozhenko scoring on Mikey LaForge. So Lieutenant Worf scores on Lieutenant Commander LaForge while Lieutenant Commander Data's in the press box. And then Connor McDavid comes in, ties this game up. That's what he does. Shots 34-31. Are we headed to overtime? Yes, we are. 34-32 now. 2-2 game in the extra period. Will there be a hero in this five minutes of added time? No. Shots end 36-35 for the Oilers. And in the shootout, we take it with a winner from Patrick Laine, technically, and Olofsson adding the insurance. 3-2 the final. 
Oh boy, what a night. Shesterkin makes 34 saves. War for Zhenko, poss possibly his first goal as a Blue Jacket, not sure. That's game number 14 now, but we're 11-3-0, and oh, doing extremely well. Let's not stop for a second here. Let's keep on simulating. Let's go see a divisional matchup up against the better team of the two ones from Pennsylvania at the moment, that being the Philadelphia Flyers in a couple weeks' time. Andrew Peak MCL sprain. Oof, that's brutal, unfortunately. So, quick little change there. Just to check out on the players here. Felipe Sanderson, what? 10 assists in 15 games. Perot, okay. Okay, what about like uh, Seneshin? Yeah, nice simulation. There we go. So, Gavrikov looking good as well. I'll just make a couple changes here. And then, I'd be tempted to even get a better AHL coach for the defense. But, that'll be for another time. I'm just going to fix the defense quickly and we'll get back to the calendar sim. And all is well there, so good couple weeks of simulation here, but ooh, hold on, Falk has a concussion out until the 15th of December. I think we're in mid-November, right? So that's a pretty hefty injury, actually. That's extremely unfortunate, until December 15th. Uh, so that means we're going to probably promote Roy as an offensive defenseman. Yeah, keeps the plus five. And now playing with Kyle Wood will be Calvin DeHaan. So it's not a big issue at all for the third pair but very unfortunate for the second pair. So let me back out here and pause the simulation. It is, today's date is November the 21st. So yeah, it's about a month. So good couple weeks of simulation. We lost the Blues 5-3. to three. Big win against a big opponent. 5-4 in the shootout against Colorado. 5-3 win to Minnesota. 5-2 win to the Lightning. And 4-3 shootout win against the Stars. Now going up against the Montreal Canadiens, we're 15-4-0. and oh. I guess we'll keep it as is. Uh, hopefully DeHaan can just fill in wherever Falk was, because, you know, being on the power play, offensive defenseman, that will keep the plus five. So, oh my goodness. 2-1 shootout win, and then an 8-1 shellacking at the hands of the Penguins. 8-1. to one. What? Whoa! 33 points in 21 games from Patrick Laine with 20 goals. He's almost at a goal per game pace. Okay, this is the Patrick Line we have been waiting for. Sam Steele with 9 points in 21 games. Rough. Rozovic, 6 points, negative 4. Okay, it's time to make some changes, probably. Uh, Jeremy Roy, negative 3. Dahan was a negative 2 in that one. That's unfortunate. Rizhenko, probably. Uh, 9 goal. Yeah, that was not his first goal. He has 9 goals. Shosturkin got beat up a little bit. Okay. Let's make a couple changes. I'm sorry, by the way, Falk, before he got injured, he... Okay, that's the Falk we like to see. 15 points in 19 games. So that's a big hole we have to fill now. So, man, Steele's hurting me a little bit and that second line role. The first line seems to be... Yeah, pfft, Reinhardt, playmaker of the century here with 29 assists in 21 games. Bjorkstrand's doing well. I'm not going to touch that first line at all, but, ooh, that second line's struggling. Special Texay only one goal and eight assists. Three and six for Steele. What if I take out Texier instead of taking out um, Steele and I put Kurshev at left wing? I could even put uh, Sveshnikov at left wing. What would he do for chemistry? Only a plus one. Okay, let's try. Let's do my original idea here, which was to put Kurshev in at left wing. That gives it a plus three. And Texier can play third line with Foody and Jenner. Let's try that. Second line, the, the grinder line is doing well. And yeah, I guess I won't touch defense either. Special teams, power play is only a plus three now. So let me swap out. I guess I'll keep Dahan. But I'll take out the. I'll put Jeremy Roy, who maybe questionably simulates better? Question mark? Not sure. One goal and Adam, not really. But let's try him out there. Give him a good, good chance of getting some ice time. And with Kurashev replacing Rozovic, that doesn't help the. Uh, Penalty kill lines. Actually, Shaw could go, and that balances it out. Ter anyway, 65 shot block. You can't do that. May as well just put Reinhardt in there. Give him some more ice time. Why not? Let's go Reinhardt, and then Shaw can go to the wing, I suppose. Okay, let's try that moving forward now. Couple changes after that 8-1 shellacking, like we said. But we're up against the Flyers, who are 12-7-2. We're 16-5-0. In the conference, we are at the top. We have 32 points, five ahead of the Devils, and the Flyers are six points behind us. So this would be a massive two points to get over them as we'd then be eight points ahead of them as opposed to our lead going down to four points. First period, one nothing. Andrew Shaw, how does he do it? 
Second period, 2 nothing. Boone Jenner, the captain. Shots are 24 to 9. Currently destroying the Flyers in that regard. But Rudsov scores a shorthanded goal and Konechny 40 seconds later. And this game's tied at 2. Power play for us. Nothing comes from that. And now we're tripling the shots. 33 to 11. And thank goodness Sam Steele scores to make it 3 to 2. Literally tripling their shots again. 36 to 13 for a second there. Still only up by 1. Sam Reinhardt adds the empty netter for his third goal of the season, and we win it 4-2. to two. two goals on 14 shots. Come on, Igor. Jenner with a goal and assist. Dahan had two assists. Hey, good for you. You know what, Dahan? You're going back on the power play unit. After we gave up that shorthanded goal, you're going back. All right, so that was a huge win for us against the Flyers. Let's go two weeks into the future to see the current team that is on our tail for the Metropolitan Division, being the New Jersey Devils. That is a lot of game between now and then, though. So 2-1 loss, that's brutal against the... New York Rangers, 3-2 loss against the uh, Calgary Flames, two, so back-to-back -back one, oh no, pause, 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 and then MCL, all these injuries, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back one goal losses, and then I simmed into December, meaning I forgot to go and look what was up with Morgan Frost, we have no defense to fill in here, so Jonathan Dolan is going to go on defense, negative three, cool. And we win 3-2 to two in overtime, even though I said to stop the simulation. So, 18-8 no is the record. Oh, I can't believe I forgot to check the RFAs. Ah, but I don't know if, you know, Steel's at like a point every other game right now. So, I'm not sure if I, again, if I would have gone all in on Morgan Frost there. Uh, was he still unsigned? Well, Joe Pavelski is still unsigned. Two-way forward. Now there's one team interested in him. As a two-way forward, it's not ideal. We could always still trade for Morgan Frost, though. And if his trade value is low a lot enough, we could trade the pieces that we don't really need, like Gavrikov or whoever else. Uh, Ratcliffe, how is he looking, by the way? So Morgan Frost, his trade value is looking like that. Still unsigned. So we could get him to play him for next season. So that would be the only thing. But still, we don't know his fit. That's a very big risk for someone that you don't know that their fit. That's the biggest thing holding me back. I don't... Not, it's not that I don't want to take the risk. It's that if his fit's not good... We now we have another playmaker on our hands for no reason, and then what do we do with him? We get him, then sign him, then see his fit, then trade him before he even plays a game for us? No, we can't do that. So we come back with a 3-2 win, which was nice, but let me get a quick pause to see what was up with those one-goal games. We need better scoring in the top six here. Negative three with five games for Kurashev. You're killing me, Kurashev. Ah, Texay back to the second line. I almost put like, do I have to put Foodie on the second line here? Like, what do I got to do here to just try and jumpstart something? Like, he's a good playmaker. Like, t him and Texie are both good playmakers. What about Jenner to second line center? How about that? Then we can go Foodie, Steele, and Roslevic. It's a zero. Why not? Let's just try that for a few games, just for funsies. Plus 12, 11. Negative 2, negative 8. That's probably a huge issue right there. Uh, plus 2 and a zero. So let's go defensive defenseman. With an offensive defenseman, that means Calvin DeHaan would move up. Only a plus one, though. Okay, Jemmy Wall, you've been terrible, but I'm going to give you the plus five with Rajenko. Hopefully that helps Worf, and then Jones helps Larson. Just to kind of just, you know, makeshift bandage things up until Falk comes back. Which, by the way, is very soon. So we're still going to go up to that game against the Devils. And then he'll be back for the game against the Hurricanes on the 17th. Nice 4-1 win. There we go. Canadians, we beat them 6-4. to four. Okay, okay. We are 28 and 0 through 28 games. Devils are 17, 9, and 3. Right on our backs here. First period, 2-1 game. Boone Jenner on the power play. Alex Texier right back into that second line. Michael McLeod scoring for them, for the Devils against Corpi Salo. Second period, Devils tied up. It's Jakob Vrana. 23 to 21 are the shots in New Jersey's favor, and it's a tie game heading into the final 20 minutes. As per usual, Alex Holtz with a huge goal right there to put the Devils ahead by one. We have only two goals on 25 shots on Mackenzie Blackwood thus far. Power play for the Devils, five on three, five on four. We kill off both of those. Momentum back in our favor, perhaps, but nothing coming from it. The Devils are getting a ton of shots out there, out shooting us 35 to 26 in the end. Verana adds the empty netter, and we drop it four to two, the final. That's a tough game to drop. That is a tough, tough game to drop. Uh, and now Rosovic has injured ribs. Okay. Uh, head coach replaces... I'm, <sighs> Rosovic can replace him for one game. Or sorry, Kershaw can replace him for one game. 
And then let's get the lineup fixed back to what it should be. You know what? No, Shveshnikov's going to come in. Kuroshev's been terrible. Shveshnikov's coming in. And then we'll get Falk against the Hurricanes, the team that he played on before the Blues. And then he's fully healed. Perfect. Sim through the game against the Panthers. Uh, Dano for a second and a fourth. Extremely tempting. Panthers, we beat them 6-3. to three, And we're 21-9-0 through the first 30 games. So Falk's back, going to power play unit 1 for the plus 5. I'm going to put Dahan on power play unit number 2 to actually give it a plus 3. He'll replace Seth Jones, who although he's having a good offensive season, only had 2 power play points thus far. I'm going to go Dahan and Wood, because Dahan 5 assists in 11 games. Meanwhile, Jeremy Roy has 4 points in 30 games and is a negative 11 to boot. So, not ideal. Let's continue rolling with the lines looking like that. And we're just about ready to pause for the end of this episode once we get to January 1st. So, the last game that we'll go watch is against the Winnipeg Jets, I suppose. Now, we'll go see the one against the, the Hawks on New Year's Day in Chicago. Winter Classic. And then we'll check out the points and call it a day. one nothing shootout loss against the Hurricanes. That's brutal. That is still a shutout for whoever was in Nets, though. Shveshnikov, do we take him out? Three games, negative one. Or do I put in Roslovic, who has eight points, negative two in 24 games. Now I'll put Roslovic back. There you go, Jackie. Uh, Florida Panthers now. We got back-to-back -back games against them and the um, Leafs. We get shut out three to nothing. So back-to-back -back games are being shut out. And then we beat the Toronto Maple Leafs, thankfully. Peek is back in the lineup. That's great. We beat the Leafs five to one, by the way. New Jersey Devils, another big matchup. We lose to them again, 3-1. to one. Tied with them in points now at the top of the division. We beat the Leafs 4-1, to one, thank goodness. We beat them twice, outscoring them 9-2 to two in one week's time. Coyotes fire their head coach, Cameron Brodziak. And then we lose 6-2 to two against the Jets. So here we are against the Hawks. We are 23-12-1. They are 19-4-3. Final game of this episode before we pause to see what's going to happen for the second half of this season. And hopefully we end it off with a dub because every point matters here. First period, 1-0 Hawks, Dominic Kubalik. Second period, 2-1. Line A ties it up on Braden Holtby. Then Patrick Kane gets that one goal lead back. Shots 18-10 for Chicago. Power play for the Hawks early in the third, but we kill it off. Power play for us now. Our chance, 5-on-3 power play. Nothing. We got plus 5, plus 3, and nothing for a 5-on-3 power play. And then the power play for the Hawks just expires, but Kirby Doc scores as it expires. Ah, down by two with under five to go. Being outshot 25 to 18. Ah, that's a brutal loss. 3-1 the final. I don't know who to put the blame on for that one. Shosturkin has to be a bit stronger on game. Can't let in three goals on games that are under 30 shots. And Zach said, okay, at least that's in Cleveland. Uh, head coach can replace that. I'll get to it off camera. So... We end off the video slipping, unfortunately, down to third in the division. It is so tight in that division. From fifth to first. Fifth to first. Five points. Dividing first place to fifth place in the Metropolitan Division. Let's check out the point totals for the team here. Who's been slacking? Who's killing it? Patrick Laine, a monster with 45 points and 26 goals in 37 games. Reinhardt with 38 assists. Him and Laine are just best friends out there. 44 points for him. Patrick Laine, you could argue that he should get, get an A as well. He's only signed for one more season after this one, though. You know, the attitude problems or whatever else you want to talk about. I think Laine is an absolute, like a, a lock for an alternate captaincy in the future. But right now, I guess it just didn't make much sense. But, you know, he's playing well. I'm sure he wants to stay here. So I do see a letter on his jersey in the very near future. Just that the reasons I gave for the other guys made a bit more sense in my mind. Bjorkstrand, 32 and 37. Texier picking up a bit now, 23 and 37. Boone Jenner is doing great. That captaincy is making him smile. 22 points in 37 games for him. Uh, already on pace to beat last season, I believe. Uh, on pace for 48.75 points. So he's on pace for a career high, actually, right now. No, almost a career high. If it's 49, he scored in 2015-16. Uh, Victor Olofsson's been a disappointment. 20 points in 37 games. Only 12 goals. But, I don't know, comparatively, maybe it's not so bad. He's on pace for about the same as last season at the moment. Justin Falk, 18 points in 26 games. Lovely. Rajenko, 17 and 37. Jones, 17 and 37. Andrew Shaw with 14 points in 37 games. As much as Steele and Foodie. And more than Roslovic and everybody else under him as well. So that's really crazy. Foodie's looking good in his first uh, in his rookie season here. Steele, I'd be expecting a bit more from Steele 
So that's what's making me think that, uh, are we trading this guy? I don't know. I don't know. Foodie, Clutterbuck, uh, Larson, 10 points plus one. Rosovic, eight points in 29 games. Defensive plus minuses are not the best. Delorier, six assists in 37 games. Kurashev, negative three in five games. Shveshnikov, negative one in three games. Goaltending now. Shesterkin, 17, 10, and 1 with one shutout. 9, 12 save percentage and 2.47 goals against in 29 games played. Corpy Salo, 6, 3, and 0. 9, 0, 1 and a 3.15 goals against. A bit, that's a bit scary right there. So Shesterkin's numbers aren't bad at all, but who are like some of the best goalies in the league right now? It's still the same guys as, all, as always. I think like Allmark. Swayman's even looking good. Whew. Like if I'm sorting by minimum 10 games... And looking at save percentage, who's the best? Who are the best guys? Rene Nedeljkovic, Dustin Wolf, really Dustin Wolf, that's cool. Ranta, Flurry, Flurry. Now he's gonna do this. Flurry, of course, he signs a one-year, four-point-five million-dollar deal, and then he just turns on the Jets as an eighty. His overall goes down, his performance goes up. Saros, same for Drieger as well. That's disgusting. Okay. Anyways. Win-wise, uh, it's Robin Leonard, but Markstrom really killing it as well. A lot of good goalies out here. Looking at point totals now, Tyler Sagan, 47-42. and 42. Line A right behind him, and he has less games played. Uh, Reinhardt as well. So they're both going to be competing for the Art Ross, perhaps. Line A even competing for the Rocket Richard as he leads the league in goals at the moment. Max Pacioretty, not for that. pretty rare to see him so up there in points, so that's cool. Marsha, Ryan O'Reilly's there. Nylander, Kasperi Kapanen, Taylor Hall, Alexi Lafreniere simulating well. Cody Glass, that's a rare one. 85 overall, 38 points to see him doing so well is surprising. And down the list we go. Rupe Hints, 35 points in 42 games. Zach Wierenski, 35 points in 38 games. What? Deep pairing one, power play one. That's true. I keep forgetting when we play against the Devils. And not just, it wasn't just divisional rival. It was Wierenski versus Worf. 35 points what of course when he's playing with us he scores 35 points in an entire season if we're lucky him over here on, now in new jersey 35 and 38 games with a plus 28 makes no sense and oh yeah you see you shouldn't have traded him you should have kept jones no if we had kept him he wouldn't be doing that it's theodore burns ekblad that is so crazy Rookie skaters, Albrecht, Krebs, Rossi. That's really wild. Uh, going to player search here just to see other names that we may be interested in seeing what's up with them. Guys like Max Domi over in the Ducks, what's happening with them. Uh, 83 overall, he still is. He has 18 points, excuse me, 28 points in 41 games over on the Ducks. The created goalies here, Coconut Hobbs. Uh, tough save percentage and goals against average, actually. That's pretty rough. Six foot nine with that 75 five holes not helping, unfortunately. And uh, Drew McIntyre, not getting to play much behind Jak uh, Jacob Markstrom. So a candidate to trade for, question mark? Even though his win he's 2-4-0, oh, I don't know. Really, really low trade value for an 85 overall. Speaking of trades, we'll close out the episode by looking at all the trade blocks. Is there Are there any moves we should make heading into uh, the second half of the season? Uh, here are the current trade values. So Sanderson, up to an 81 overall. Currently has 8 goals and 21 assists in 33 games. So 29 points, a plus 21. Do we promote him to the NHL as a third-line forward and, for, and you know, just dump Kershev and Roslovic and Shveshnikov? That's a possibility. Uh, other trade values that are growing. Foodie is looking good. Pedro at 76 overall, 20 points in 33 games. Dura up to a 71. Uh, Jargit Shinsev, another playmaker on our team. Do we think about just dumping him because there's no room for him? There are the other trade values, uh, goalie trade values as well, if you're interested, looking like that. Bad Danny still got to trade him because he's not doing anything for us. Let's look at the trade blocks around the NHL. Venti still there on the Ducks. Coyotes, Lerue, Morin, Gauchy. Still all the Québécois still up for grabs on the Coyotes. I know people love when there's some French-Canadian names. Always love to pronounce those. McCormick, Franzen, Zemgis on the uh, on the um, Sabers, Zari, Pelletier, Lapointe, uh, no big names there. And if, even if it's not to trade for, if anyone want to scout, let me know as well. Uh, big names here in Taze, Manson, Dano, Martinez, really big names there, in in terms of overall as well. Cop, Devon, Taze, Johnson, Donskoy, Spezza, Faxa, Kivi, Ranta, Lindholm, Ekholm, McCabe, David Perron, eighty-two overall, thirty-four. 
years of age. Fits the top six as a sniper. Interesting. Edmonton, Raphael Lavoie et Theo Rochette sont là. Bennett, Sam Bennett still an RFA. You could trade for his rights. Uh, Walker, Mathieu Perrault, Hartman, Juice, Gouli over on the Canadians. 75 overall, medium top 4D. Devils have Kulak, CC. Uh, Bailey Radulov, interesting, on the Islanders. Fits the third line as a playmaker. Another playmaker, though, that's the thing. Bailey is a two way four. No, he's a playmaker. Playmaker. And he fits all power play and penalty kill. Rangers got Schneider, uh, Dadnov over on the Senators. Sniper who fits the top six. Brown, Nubivara, Zaitsev, Sanheim, Frost, of course. Sanheim, look how low this trade value is. Like, I don't know what he's asking for that his value is that low. He's a two way D. We don't know anything about him, unfortunately, but he's an 86 overall. Do we just sign him? And try to play him. Things don't work out. We say, hey, and we trade him. We get a bunch of trade value out of him. I'd like it, but is that cheesing the system? Give me your honest thoughts. Is that cheesing the system? Trading like a third round pick or something for the rights to Travis Sanheim. That's what we got to figure out. We would have the money. Rask, McGinn, Peary, Simek, uh, Scandella, Spiza. A few names here. Engval and Malgin, both also RFAs with a low trade value. Uh, no one else there. Petrangelo, Hyman, Vlasic, Stevenson. A lot of interesting names. Uh, Hyman has 19 points in 41 games. Oh, now it says he fits forward line two. What? It was four bars. That's a scam. Capitals, that's it. And the Jets. Okay. There are the trade blocks heading into the second half of the regular season. Looking at the division here, there we are in third place. It is extremely tight. Bruins at the top of the league, 26-13-2 and two is their record. We're currently ninth best in the league. We're scoring very well, but we're conceding 2.73. Not too bad. Power play at 20.9%, one of the best in the league, one of the top 10. And then the penalty kill at 88.5. Best penalty kill in the NHL interesting so i'm not going to touch the special teams that's the one thing we don't have to really be worried about coaching staff what's up with the coaching chemistry maybe it's the staff chemistry is up to 56 which is nice that was an issue for us last time uh contracts again if we were to go for sandheim or something we do have the money uh do we think about offering extensions as well to guys like wood dahan gavrikov not a lot of big names here but we do have 7.873, like we said, in extension dollars. And grinders. Do we Are we happy with the grinders that we have now? Or do we look to trade for better ones? Looking at all grinders in the NHL. And then sorting by overall right now. So guys like Wilson. Uh, we have, well, we have Shaw. McEwen at an 80 overall is out here. He has 6 points in 42 games played. 66 discipline, though, is what hurts me. His defensive ratings are very nice, though. So it fits all forward lines and all penalty kill lines. That's the interesting part about McEwen. Nazarov, so interesting as a, a grinder prospect, but no chance we have that trade value. Uh, Garnet Hathaway, bottom six. Uh, Andy Androff, don't know about him. Kyle Clifford, again, all these guys in the AHL. We barely know anything about them if they're in the AHL, unfortunately. Like Cedric Paquet fits the penalty kill lines. But I'm not going to move Andrew Shaw off of center. He's just too good. And guys like Tom Wilson, it's too much. He's too good for the fourth line. That's pretty much it. Same with Michael Oliver. Too good for. Ah, but he's third line, but need for the fourth line. All right, just to say. So I will wrap it up there. A long enough episode as is. I said I'm trying to keep them a bit shorter. So thank you so much for watching. Leave all your thoughts for the second half of the regular season, year number three, in the comments down here on YouTube or over in the Discord server. Link in the description. Things are looking up here in Columbus. It's a very extremely tight division, but we're playing well. And I think if we can just keep our pedal to the metal, make small tweaks if and where those may be needed. I think that we will be a playoff team and can start thinking about competing and contending for a Stanley Cup in the very near future. Leave a comment as well with what you predict Patrick Laine's final goal total will be. Currently 26 in 37, which means he's on pace for like 57 and a half goals, I think, according to my calculations here. Closest one to his total will get a shout out at the end of next episode when we find out how many he gets. So looking forward to reading all those comments and seeing you all again in the next one.